Hi. I wanted to take just a couple minutes this morning. Actually, it's going to be more than a couple. Sorry. But I want to go through kind of an overview of the first three chapters and kind of hit the high points. There's some really interesting stuff about SolidWorks um, and the history of the company. And so I'm going to utilize some materials that the publisher of the textbook provided. And I want to go through this with you. It's kind of interesting. So um, give me a sec. I'm going to share a PowerPoint with you. I'm just going to get the slideshow going here so it, it looks better. There we go. All right, so SolidWorks was actually founded in 1993. And SolidWorks is a little different than AutoCAD because SolidWorks actually started as a 3D modeling platform. And so therefore, that's the whole focus and the starting point of the software, unlike some of the others in which they spent much of their existence in a 2D platform and then converted to a 3D. It is affordable, um, even without an educational discount. The only thing I'm disappointed in is that SolidWorks doesn't have a free option like AutoCAD does, but at, I think it's between three and $500 even for an individual, it really isn't it's not outrageous. It's not completely out of reach if you had a need for this at home. Um, there are a variety of levels of SolidWorks that you can purchase, and I will let you look through those at your leisure. This PowerPoint will be available in doc sharing on eCompanion if you want to read through this in detail. There's a lot more information on these slides than I usually put online, but I left it because I want you to have it available to you. So let's take a look real quick at the SolidWorks user interface, what the screen looks like when you open SolidWorks and open a new part file. And we'll go through this more as we work through the chapters. So this is, once you open a new part file, this is the general blank screen that we start with. And there are a few things to be aware of here. Um, up at the top, there are a whole bunch of display or sorry, pull down menu. So each one of these, just like any Windows application, if you click on File, Edit, View, or Insert, you'll get additional options. We will learn more about these as we go through. There's also a lot of detailed information about this in both chapters one and two. There's also display the display pane. Now this, this pane over here is where we're gonna do a lot of our work. It's where we choose the sketch that we're going to work on. It's where we choose the element that we might want to work on. And this feature manager tree, feature manager design tree, sorry, tells it gives us access to pretty much every aspect of the part that we're building. You can hide this pane, this tree, if it's in your way by clicking on this little triple arrow here. Um, this reference triad down here, it tells us which plane we are working in because this is a 3D system. We can work in the X, Y, and Z planes. And right now, this thing tells us that we are in the X, Y plane. Think of each plane as a sheet of paper or if it helps you, you can envision the corner of a room. The X, Y plane is typically the floor. So it's the one we stand on. It's the horizontal plane. Um, down here at the bottom, we always know which edition of SolidWorks we are working in. And over here, this little unit selection button, it's really small. It's really easy to miss. It's really important. IPS stands for inches, pounds, seconds. There are other options. This is the standard imperial option. There's also an SI option. And we will We'll talk about that a lot more too, um, but it makes your life a lot easier if you remember to set your units earlier in your model rather than later, um, although it's never too late to change it. Over here um, on the right, we've got what's called a design library, and 
it's also useful. Everything that shows up here typically tends to be useful. News and alerts I don't look at very much. It's there. I don't turn it off because it's not really in my way. Um, but I, I tell you, I, I really don't look at it a whole lot. And up here at the top, we've got the command manager. It's also very important. Um, there's also this little heads up display. Gives you right below the command manager, which in other Windows applications is called the ribbon. And I use that quite a bit because it's a handy way to change my view or some of the display properties. So this is just kind of a quick orientation. Um, notice that your origin, that's the 000, zero, zero point, it's the place where all three planes come together, is denoted in the middle by a little double-headed blue arrow. OK. There's also ways to change how we look at things. And that's what the viewport is all about. That little heads up display I was talking about, the middle one there, will help you change your view orientation. You can change which views and how many views you have on the screen at any one time. You can look at a model from the top, from the front, from the right, or you can look at it more in perspective. So this is kind of the 3D version of the orthographic views. And SolidWorks will do um, orthographic view drawings for you. So if you're accustomed to doing those by hand, you're not going to have to necessarily if you're using SolidWorks. Um, but you can change this just by clicking on this view orientation button and choosing the appropriate option. You can also get to it from the view drop-down menu. As in most programs, there's going to be many ways to get to everything in SolidWorks. Your mouse is your primary tool. If you've got a standard mouse, and if, you're, if you are used to the Windows environment, this won't be a surprise to you. The left mouse button, you can single, double, single click or double click. It does different things. Typically, it selects whatever you're on just like the left mouse button usually does. Your scroll wheel is actually pretty um, powerful in SolidWorks. You can double click your scroll wheel to zoom to extents. You can roll your scroll wheel to zoom in or out. You can also hold down your scroll wheel and drag your mouse to pan. And panning just means dragging the view around. Play with it some more. And the right mouse button, also, it opens up a contextual menu. Those are the pop-up menus that we generally see, you see in Windows environments. And that menu will look different depending on what we are right-clicking on. Now, also in SolidWorks, we can configure a lot of stuff, and we can customize all of this in the mouse properties control panel. And um, chapter, I think it's one. Chapter one takes you through all of the things that you can change and customize in SolidWorks. There's a lot in there. Um, now do be aware in the CAD lab, the computers are um, reset to defaults every time so everything you put on the C drive is erased every time the computer is restarted or a new person logs in. There's a way around that, and we can use a standard template file, and I will make that available to you. But do take a look at Chapter 1 and all of the things that you can customize so you can set SolidWorks up the way that you want it to be or, the, or to match the standards for your company if you're, when you get employed. So systems options, where there are two different two different categories of options and controls that you can utilize in that you can access in SolidWorks. So new documents are going to have their properties defined based on what you set in the document properties, and that's the second tab in the systems options window. There are also system options that set options for all documents. 
current and future. The document properties apply only to the current document. So that's the main difference. Um, you can copy settings. If you've got a file that you know is set up just the way you want it to be, you can actually copy the settings and the wizard will walk you through doing that. Okay, so after we've gotten SolidWorks installed and operating, one of the first things you want to do is set up your system options. This is only if you're doing a brand new installation and it's actually not critical. You can skip this and just work with the defaults. It, it generally works fine. But it's good to know what you can and cannot change within SolidWorks. Um, so once you open SolidWorks, you're going to get this screen that's got three things. And it, it may look a little different. These three things may be bigger, but your options are still a part, an assembly, or a drawing. Parts a part is the basic unit in SOLIDWORKS. It's, it's one thing. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a part. It's like a socket or a bolt. It, it is one thing. Assemblies are those things put together to make objects. And then drawings are two-dimensional representations of those things, typically, or, or, or how we, the drawing is how we control how this comes out on paper when we print it. So chapter one guides you through some of the option settings for this textbook. Um, like I said, there's a lot in there. And I encourage you to open up SOLIDWORKS and poke around and, and kind of understand what you, what, what you have the ability to control. All right, now chapter one was about system settings. Chapter two is about document properties. So once you set up your system options, then the next thing you want to do, and again, this isn't strictly necessary. If you are working in an environment where you always want things to, um, you want your documents to comply with certain standards, and most professional drafters do have that requirement. If you're in that environment, then you want to go through and set up these system options. But SOLIDWORKS will work just under the default options. It's not a problem. So we can set our drafting standard by far and away. The most common one is ANSI, followed by ISO, and then there's a whole bunch of others. We can set our, de our default dimensions. We can talk about the notes, the balloons, and the font sizes. We can, we can specify arrowhead sizes and how annotations are displayed. Lots of things that we can automate to always show up the same way within SOLIDWORKS on our documents. So it saves us some of those fiddly little steps around formatting things. You can define individual templates for parts, assemblies, and drawings. And you can even control how you access those things. So I told you there were different standards. Um, ANSI is by far and away the most common in the United States because it is the voice of the United States Standards and Conformity Assessment System. So there, there is actually a, a stand, a, an overall organization that makes sure all of our weights and measures are standardized. And, and ANSI, ANSI, the American National Standard Institute, is that organization. They were founded in 1918, excuse me. Yes, they were founded in October, actually, of 1918. And it oversees really just about everything that happens in terms of measuring and um, actually construction equipment. ANSI standards are, are overarching and far-reaching, and we all abide by them because the industries have agreed that that, that is the right way to do things. Um, so it's kind of like building codes, but far more broad and more specific all at the same time. Generally, you run into ANSI standards as you need to in your job. It's just something to be aware of that when somebody says, we use ANSI, 
or ISO um, and a certain number. That's a standard procedure. ISO is the International Organization for Standardization. I don't know why they don't call it IOS. Oh, yes, I do. Okay, ISO, ISO. Um, it, ISO really is an effort to standardize. So, so the important thing about ISO management is that procedures are written down and followed. ISO doesn't necessarily dictate best practices in the way that ANSI does, but an ISO audit checks to see that an organization has procedures written down and that they follow those procedures and that they can provide evidence that they follow those procedures and that those procedures are somehow related to their product quality. Um, this is most important for businesses that operate internationally. And if your employer is concerned about ISO, you'll know it relatively quickly. Okay, as I mentioned, there are a lot of other standards. Many of them are regional. Uh, for example, DIN is the German Institute for Standardization. So be aware that if you're working in other, in other countries, if you're doing international work, you may have to come, become a little bit more familiar with some of these other standards. SolidWorks um, can help you with that. Okay, so how do we control all of this stuff? Well, document properties is accessed through the tools and options menu on the document properties tab. Again, chapter two will walk you through what is there and what you have available to control to you. All right. The reason we're doing all three chapters, the first three chapters this week, is because I really wanted to get us into SolidWorks. And that is what this slide, or what, what we're going to do, what chapter three does. Hold on. Okay. So. In chapter three, we're actually going to draw a thing. Now, SolidWorks builds relationships between sketch entities, and sketch entities are exactly what it sounds like. It's the outline sketch of a shape. We always start with a sketch in 2D, and then we extrude that into 3D. So we add thickness to it. And we can adjust the properties of the sketch, which will change the properties of the object. SolidWorks is built around the concept of design intent. Now, what that really means is when you're building your sketch, you want to think about the relationship between the different parts of that sketch. In other words, sometimes you always want two sides to be equal. You can set that relationship in SOLIDWORKS and that the, the desire to always want two sides to be equal is part of your design intent. Perhaps you always want two sides to be perpendicular or to always be a certain angle to one another, 30 degrees. And when I say always, this is because we're envisioning that we're going to be maybe modifying this, this model in the future. Maybe we need to make the thing smaller. Maybe we need to make one side a little shorter. Maybe we need to make a hole a little bigger. Maybe we need to make um, a recess a little deeper or a little shallower. What you want to be aware of as you're building your sketch is as you make those changes, what do you want to always be true around it? So, for example, I built these little keychain guys. I think you can see this camera in your corner. This little thing is just a flat rectangle. Um, it's 3D printed, and there's a recessed area where I've then lifted up the letters BMCC in the middle. Now, when I did this, I wanted the letters to be level with the top surface. So, when I built the extrude, I set it so that I always extruded up to this surface. So no matter if I change the depth or the thickness of this, see thickness? These letters will always be level with the surface. The other thing I did was there's a recess. I made that recess be half of the depth so that 
if I decide I want a thinner keychain, my recess is still halfway through. So I, if I don't do that, then if I change my depth, my thickness without changing my recess depth, I could end up with something that doesn't make any sense. So be aware of your relations, and this will become second nature. But you can see how this sketch down here at the bottom has got different colors. The blue and the black mean things, and so do these little symbols next to the lines. Those tell us the relationships between those different entities. We can also utilize different dimensioning styles in SOLIDWORKS. So here we've got baseline dimensions up in the top where our dimensions are all kind of staggered. We can use chain dimensions where the dimensions are all on one together. We can use ordinate dimensions where we don't give any links, we just give the positions of the endpoints on the ordinates. So across the bottom here, these would be x coordinates, and across the right, those would be y coordinates. And you can also set path lengths. In other words, you can tell SOLIDWORKS that you need this curve to be six units long. Whether those are inches or millimeters depends on your unit system. And you can set that constraint point to be at different places on the line. And this is useful if you're working with, for example, a belt or a pulley. So you only know, so you've only got so much distance along your belt. And as you modify your pulley sizes, the separation between those pulleys need to come together or go apart further apart to make sure that your belt is always the is always the same length. These are all things that we will work with as we move through this term. And We'll play with some of them in this chapter. OK, just like there are different relationships between lines on the sketch, once we extrude or start to add thickness, we can also set those extrude depths based on our sketch. And, and SOLIDWORKS has got different words for doing that. So, a blind condition allows you to specifically set the thickness of your part or that part of the part, so that feature. You can also extrude up to a certain corner. So we could start from this back edge and extrude up to this point. That means these back two regions would always be filled, even if we changed these dimensions here. With blind, this extrude thickness is completely independent of anything else. So we need to be a little careful with the blind extrude, because if we were to change the base dimension of our part, it would not change this thickness. Whereas if we go up to vertex, changing the base dimension will adjust the thickness of the fill back here, this filled in part, or hole, whatever that is. It's a filled in part, we're going to say it is. And um, we could extrude that up to a vertex. We can also go through all, which means our extrusion is going to go from the back edge clear to the front edge, all the way from one end of the part to the other end. We can go up to a surface. So this is similar to up to a vertex, except we're going up to the far surface of that part. We can just extrude up to the next condition. Or we can extrude up to a body, which allows us to select a surface and then an offset distance. And, or we could offset it from the surface completely and extrude to a body, to a solid body, which allows us to set an angle if we've built that in. These are some of the features of SOLIDWORKS as we work through this chapter and the remainder of the term, we will investigate these and many others. Um, I am going to do a video that works us through chapter three, so I'll see you soon.